Like we have a substitution rule for indefinite integrals, we also have one for definite integrals. And actually the formulation of the substitution rule in this case resembles the one for indefinite integrals very much. So suppose we have a function g on a b with a continuous derivative g prime and um, f is continuous suppose f is continuous on the range of the function g now we will write the function g as u equals g of x so f is a continuous function basically on an interval we think of the range of g of x as an interval then the integral from a to b of fx g prime x dx can be calculated. So a ranges from a to b. So g x ranges from g a to g b. So now we can replace this integral by the integral from g a to g b where we made the substitution u equals g of x. So we get the integral from g a to g b of f u du. Well the proof is rather easy. So since f is supposed to be continuous, f has a primitive. So consider capital F as primitive of f. Then we have the following. We can rewrite the integral on the left-hand side, the definite integral on the left-hand side, which is the integral of a to b of fx gx g prime x. We can write for f, we can write capital F prime right since f is a capital f is a primitive of f we see that this equals the integral of a to b of f f prime gx g prime x but notice here recall that that now we see that the integrand is basically the derivative of the function f of gx so f of gx is a primitive and we may apply the main theorem of calculus and evaluate this primitive in the endpoints b and a. So we get fgb and f minus fga. Also, if we consider u equals g of x, the definite integral g of a g b f u du equals, well, we know the primitive of f, so we know that this is capital F, so we get capital F u evaluated in the endpoints g, b, and g, a. So plugging in, substituting for g, b, and g, a, we get the f of g, b minus the f of g, a, which is just the same as the integral, the value of the integral that we looked at before. Yeah, so basically we are done here with the proof. Now you may now you may question what are these regularity assumptions about about g prime being continuous f being continuous well basically this is done to assure that within the definite integral a to b f x f of g x g prime x we have a continuous function on a closed interval so that we know that the definite integral exists and uh, there's some theory which goes beyond this uh, discourse which tries to relax these assumptions but we won't do as here